Very quickly, I'm going to give an introduction. My name is Walter Cook. I'm one of the librarians here at the Santa Fe Public Library. And uh, it's been my great pleasure and uh, honor to uh, work with Catherine Flynn. She is a former Secretary of, of, uh, of State for the state of New Mexico. De Deputy Secretary. Oh, uh, my, my I get in trouble if we. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, we have to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, right? Yes, absolutely. Anyway, uh, we're very pleased to have you here. Um, she is also the um, executive director for the National New Deal Preservation Association here for the state of New Mexico, which, as it turns out, the state of New Mexico, New, the state of New Mexico has an incredible collection. Some of it is really close, and I highly encourage you to go look at some of it. Um, much of the of the uh, collection, or at least images, photographs of it, is here at Main Library, and Ms. Flynn is here to talk about it. So I'm going to mute myself and and just pay attention. All Thank right. You Thank you, Walter, very much. It's a great opportunity to have the chance to share with you and others. Uh, I hope a lot of others about all the things that were done during the New Deal in New Mexico and Santa Fe, because there's a lot for you to go and find. And some of it you've already known about for years, but you didn't know its history. So let's find out what was the New Deal. That was um, <clears throat> a major thing that saved this country between 1933 and 43, because it, our country was totally floundering because of the severe financial depression it was in after the stock market crash in 29. And then guess what? We were also having a drought and our country was blowing away. And it was sure as heck blowing away here in New Mexico and West Texas uh, where all these sandstorms were keeping us from, in some cases, being able to even go out or be able to see through the windows. I remember in the fifth grade, I sat right next to a window uh, and the light was further over in the building, in the room, and I couldn't see some days to read the book that was on my desk because of the sandstorms. They were terrible. So Franklin Roosevelt was elected president in 1933 and he immediately said, we've got to do something and let's put in some things to save this country. And boy, did was he successful. And so I want to share with those things with you and particularly what's here in Santa Fe and New Mexico. But uh, so you can go and see, it, it may be things that you've walked by and never noticed. Because, you know, sometimes when you go to a courthouse, you don't think about looking at art. But there are lots of courthouses in this state that have fabulous art, including the one just down the street here. So we're going to talk about that. And I want to also share that, as he said, I'm the executive director of the National New Deal Preservation Association, which is a nonprofit we started here in Santa Fe. And now we're just one chapter of the whole national thing. And we work with other two other organizations that are also focused on saving things that were created during the, Ro the Roosevelt administration. And our mission statement is to preserve the country's New Deal legacy through identification, documentation, preservation, and public education, which is what we're doing today, and all about its profound impact on Americans during the Great Depression. Uh, we have identified lots of buildings. We've identified lots of, of artwork. And in some cases here in New Mexico, our organization has spent $600,000 and is still working to do more to either preserve or conserve or restore artwork that is in public buildings all over this state. So we're gonna talk about that, but I also want to share about a lot of the buildings uh, because they're 
buildings all over this town. And for those of you who have grown up in Santa Fe, you probably will be excited to know that some of the school buildings you went to uh, were New Deal buildings. Or you may not even give a care, but anyway, I'm going to share it with you anyway. Um, okay, Our, we, I said we've spent 600000 in various places. Right now, our project is to restore a fountain that was created in Truth or Consequences back when it was Hot Springs, New Mexico in uh, the 1930s. And it was this beautiful fountain that was created by a woman in Santa Fe named Eugenie Chenard. And today it's not beautiful anymore. It's in terrible shape. I don't know if you can see these pictures that I've brought, but it's in pretty bad shape. And of course it's a fountain that doesn't squirt anymore. All those animals that are in it used to squirt, but they don't anymore because of all the mineralization. So we are looking to raise money to get that thing working again. So the facility was first a Carrie Tingley Hospital for children with polio in New Mexico. It is now a veterans nursing home. And that children's hospital moved on up to Albuquerque uh, to take care of children with orthopedic problems and no longer polio, thank God. Um, and there's a great story I'd like to share with you about that because when they wanted to build that facility, um, there was the legislature passed the, approved the money to give the money to an architectural firm uh, to design that building and that would become the hospital. And they wanted to name it after the governor, but he said, no, I want you to name it after my wife, Carrie Tingley. So sure enough, that's the way it went. And a few weeks, maybe two weeks after that architectural firm had gotten the uh, bid, um, Carrie Tingley went to call on him and said, I want to see what you're doing with my polioamyelitis hospital. And those architects kind of looked down at the ground. One of them told me this. And he said, we were embarrassed because we didn't know what a polioamyelitis hospital might need. And so he said, um, he told her that. And she said, oh, well, that's not a problem. Where's your telephone? And so she... They took her into the con into an office. They were in the conference room. Took her into the office. She dialed a number, and this woman at the other end said, "Oh, hi! Good to see hear from you, Carrie." And she said, "Eleanor, I have something I want to talk to you about." Well, what's that, Carrie? She said, "We want to build a polio hospital down here in New Mexico for our children, and the architects are not sure they know what it needs to have in it." And Eleanor Roosevelt said, well, that's not a problem. I'll call the architect for the Warm Springs, Georgia facility where Franklin gets treated for his polio. And two weeks later, that man was in the Albuquerque airport handing over those plans. And we had a successful, beautiful facility built. Thanks to those two gals who helped us out a lot. All right, I want to share that we are still working on that facility and I, uh, that fountain, and uh, I'll share more about that later. But I want to talk to you about the programs of the New Deal, because they were the things that put people to work. And that was what we needed, because everybody was destitute for the most part. And they couldn't feed their kids. It was just, it was awful. There was just not enough work. And so Roosevelt created the first job program was called the Civilian Conservation Corps. And it was frequently referred to as the CCC. Well, we had 56,000 boys, literally boys that were teenage uh, boys that got hired onto this program, which was run by the army. And they were hired to work in our parks and plant trees to keep this country from blowing away. Because very few people know that Franklin Roosevelt was a tree farmer. Um, and so he told them, let's, let's save this land and let's, say, let's create our national parks. And uh, you know, we've got some wonderful parks in this state. 
The closest one, of course, is Bandelier. And if you've been up to Bandelier, you know you're up, up, and then you have to go down a long driveway to get down to the buildings in the canyon. Well, those boys built that long highway down, that roadway, it's not a highway, with shovels because there was no heavy duty equipment. And you know, they got paid a dollar a day. They got to keep $5 and 25 went back to the family to feed the families. And I met some of those guys when they were in their 80s and their 90s. Unfortunately, most of them are all gone now. And some of them were younger. And I said, how come you're in your 80s and everybody else is in their 90s? And they said, because my dad or my mom lied about my age so they could get the 25 bucks. And he said, it was a deal for us. He said, Lord, we got fed well. We had new clothes, army uniforms. We didn't have to sleep with all of our brothers and sisters. We had shoes that didn't have holes in them. It was a deal, a real deal. And they got to travel all over the country in various jobs, but they worked really hard here at Bandelier, at Carlsbad Caverns, at White Sands, and over at Carnata in Bernalillo. Uh, and then of course, that uh, park that we have right down here in Santa Fe, that we like to do the burning of the zobra. That's another one of those parks that they created. And there's a lot of others all over. So that was a major program that they did and they built some buildings. And uh, after they got that road down in Bandelier, then they built all those rock buildings. So boy, those boys learned a lot and helped us a lot because we're enjoying it today. Now, then there was a program called the WPA. Now, CCC and WPA are the two programs. If, if I mention New Deal and anybody's got white hair or no hair, they might remember what I was talking about. Um, but the WPA was a whole, ca whole cadre of different programs. The main one was a labor program, putting people to work, building all kinds of things, bridges, roads, all kinds of things in buildings. But then there was an art program, the federal art program of the WPA. And in New Mexico, we had, we got 167 people got to work and got paid. 37 of them were females, uh, 28 were Hispanics, another 28 were Native Americans. And they worked uh, creating 667 paintings 65 murals, and those are in the post offices and the courthouses and the universities, lots of public buildings. And um, then there was another program called the Federal Music Program. And that was a program where the feds wanted every state to create a symphony. Well, we all know that New Mexico has also always been a very cultured place, and we already had a symphony. So what did New Mexico do with their federal music project? They hired federal, they fired Spanish, hired Spanish American musicians that knew Spanish American folk music, but they'd never seen it in writing form, in a, in a piece of music. They had learned it by ear and they had passed it on by ear and passed it on to the next one by ear. So what they did here was have musicians play the music and at the same time they were playing, there were other musicians that knew how to write the music, writing down what those boys and men and women were playing. And here's a book that came out of that. The mm -hmm. Spanish American Music in New Mexico, the WPA era. And yes, indeed, it has the songs in music form and also the lyrics written out. And it's uh, one of the prized things because no other state did something like this. Uh, so we're very, very proud of that and are proud that our Spanish American musicians got that much play and uh, got, uh, that got to work and got paid. <laughs> I'm sure their families did too. There was another program called the Federal Writers Project and every state created a state guidebook and they put everybody to work, whether they were a writer or a wannabe writer, whatever, writing about what their part of the state looked like. And today I'm sure that you have a copy of the New Mexico State Guidebook 
here in this library and we have a copy of it. And uh, you can go and look and see what we looked at or you can read, not look, but you can read and see what we looked like in New Mexico in 1933 all over the state. There were some other programs that were created back then that are still with us today. And if you got white hair or none, you're really probably very happy once a month when you get a social security check. And that was a program that was started by Roosevelt with a woman that he asked to be his secretary of labor. Her name was Frances Perkins and she had worked for him when he was the governor of New York. And she told him she would not take the job unless he promised her that he would create and approve a social security program. She won and we won every month we win. There is another program that's still with us today, particularly in the rural parts of New Mexico, and that's the Rural Electric Administration. And that brought electricity to our farmers and ranchers and their homes. And that was a magnificent uh, creation for so many thousands of people here in New Mexico. And it's still doing it today. You've got REA in every, nearly every county, certainly the rural counties. Now, another thing that you've got, when you write a check, you've got FDIC right behind you, and that's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation that is protecting your money. How about that? Did you know that there was something in your life that close to you from the New Deal? Hallelujah. And then uh, another one was FCC, which of course started out with that great thing called radio. And look at what we've got now that FCC is probably still working with. There were lots of other programs, but let's, let's talk about what happened uh, in New Mexico. I mentioned the parks. And uh, let's talk about Santa Fe schools. Some of you who grew up here maybe didn't know that you were in a New Deal school, but if you were at Asakia Madre, Alvord, Carlos Gilbert, Connie, Laragoiti, Wood Gormley, or Harvey Junior High, those were all built by the New Deal for you to be educated in. Now, Harvey's been torn down, and of course, we now have our brand new county courthouse sitting on that site across from the, court, the post office. Here in the county, Cerrillos, Chimao, Cienega, Cundillo, Edgewood, Rancho, El Rancho, Galisteo, uh, Madrid, Golden, Nambe, Pawaki, Asakia Madre, Tasuki, all of those had schools. And some of them are still schools, others are galleries, some are community centers and fire stations still serving us today. Now let's walk around Santa Fe. Uh, we could start um, over at the federal courthouse just right over here, but I think we should start right here in the building we're sitting in. And that's the main library, downtown Santa Fe. Now, it was not originally a library. It was the city hall and the, the uh, fire station. And it um, was built to take care of all the problems we had in terms of local government, local legal matters. And today it's this wonderful place uh, for us to enjoy and take in all of the, the opportunities and the books and whatever that they have for you to take care of and enjoy and take advantage of. The National Guard building was originally out on Old Santa Fe Trail and that building is now a military museum. So it's still functioning. Um, and then the way up in the mountains, the Hyde Park State Headquarters is now a restaurant. But there's all kinds of things all through the Hyde Park area, little check dams and all the park areas that you can go and picnic in and stuff. All of that was done by the CCC or WPA. Um, the former courthouse, downtown with the jail that is now some still part of the courthouse as I understand it but 
Uh, and that was done by, designed by John Galmeem, who designed a heck of a lot of these buildings all over New Mexico. The Santa Fe Boys Club. How many of you guys went to the Santa Fe Boys Club when you were growing up? And uh, it's still with us today. Uh, the Viagra building on South Capitol in Galisteo, that was the welfare office and the WPA and the CCC office. Uh, the bridge on Don Gaspar is a New Deal product. And uh, then we've got other bridges, streets, sidewalks, sewers, lots of sewers in all over the state, Asakias and early airport runways. And guess what? The National Cemetery up there on the hill, all that landscaping that was done and the improvements to make that that beautiful place, special place. My husband's buried there. And it's a wonderful place to, to go and look down on the city. And that was a New Deal product. And then there was something that you don't know much about. And those were fly-proof interior sanitation units. And there's one still up on Cerro Gordo. Do you know what a fly-proof interior sanitation unit was? That's an outhouse, but the federal government called it a fly-proof interior sanitation unit. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, this main library, as I mentioned, was built in 37 and it was, it cost $121,000 and it has two statues in it. How many of you have noticed those statues when you walk in? There's a boy and a girl and they made by Hannah Mecklen Small. And you also have here a copies or more copies of the portfolio of Spanish colonial art, which was done by a whole group of Spanish artists. It's a beautiful compilation of, of artwork to look at, a portfolio, ask for it sometime. The Fry and Helico Library right across the street, um, of course, was the original library, which was built by the Santa Fe Women's Board. So it was a private little thing. Um, and there is a mural in it that was done by Olive Rush, and it's called The Library Reaches the People. And it shows you all kinds of ways that the people of New Mexico reached out to give books for people to have wherever they were. And that library also has a whole lot of New Deal documents in it from the Federal Writers Project. I have a picture of that, just a portion of that library reaches the people. And it's not as strong as I wish it were, but I'm gonna hold it up in case you get a chance to see it. It's the library reaching the people. And uh, so now you're gonna have to go to the Fry and Helico Chavez Library. And of course, Fry and Helico Chavez was another one of those guys that was involved. He was involved more with the Writers Project because he was such a fine author uh, and a character. I got to know him fairly well. Um, let's go up the way back to the federal courthouse. It was much older than, than the New Deal, but you can't miss, if you wanna see fine, fine art, go to the federal courthouse. You can just walk in the door and see four murals immediately. They are huge and they are in the four walls when you first come in. And then if you can go through to the other end of the building, you can see two more. So there are six murals and they were all done by William Penhallow Henderson. I don't have a picture of it with me, but I have a picture that of it that we then put on a license plate and you can buy this front license plate of the old Cuba Road, which is one of the six murals in that federal courthouse. Then you can go next door to the post office. Well, let me, let me stay just here and show you the other license plate we have. This is also one it's a front license plate with a Navajo rug on it. This one is Old Cottonwoods in Nambe Valley. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And you know, we're not the only state that has a only, a doesn't allow a front license plate. So we have these 
available for 12 other states that don't have require a front license plate. So if you want one to send to some family member or friend, here's something Pablita Velarde did, and it's called the governor greets the people. And those people are us tourists looking and seeing what the world's going on at that Pueblo. This is a beautiful church scene in Picaris Pueblo. So this is on a license plate also, but these are all pieces of art that are somewhere in New Mexico. That one, Picaris, is done by Helmut Nommer. And then this one is done by, it's Mount Taylor and it's another Helmut Nommer. So it's a mountain scene. So those are May I just, interrupt? yeah. Uh, so you're selling all of those. Yes. Uh, License plates, and this is to help benefit the New Deal restoration, uh, restoration of the arts here. In Absolutely. Oh, okay. And right. they cost $25. $25. And you can order them from me. You can get them and give them for Christmas presents or, mm -hmm. or whatever you want to do. And I know all the 12 states that don't require a front license plate. So call me at 505-690-5845, and I'll tell you what those 12 states are. Okay, then the School for the Deaf, going back to buildings, they had six buildings, but only one remains, but they've got some beautiful murals in the cafeteria. Go in there sometime and see them. They're one of the, the series of murals that we have restored in, uh, we preserved those. Um, and then the Supreme Court building, oh my goodness, that is a beautiful facility that was created by the New Deal. And um, then the waterway all along Alameda, that was another WPA project that goes on and on on Alameda. And it's still with us today for us to enjoy and for our tourists to enjoy too, of course. But did you know the library in the Supreme Court, the building, the library floor is made of cork so that it would be quieter. But uh, it was a rather, expensive building. It cost $282,433 back in 37. And it also has some paintings in it. Uh, our post office has a mural in it. The post office is not New Deal. And the artwork, the mural that is in there, is an interesting history. It started out, and it was a private thing done by Gerald Cassidy. It wasn't New Deal, but it was during that time period. And Cassidy did a lot of New Deal stuff, but it was done in a theater, which is currently a building on the west side of the plaza that houses the first national bank. That was a theater. And when it closed to become, I think a Hudson auto dealership, they moved that mural somewhere. And then it got moved to the library. I mean, I'm sorry, to the post office. And then let me tell you about the post office in T or C. Now there are post offices all over this state and a lot of them not have, nearly all of them have murals in them. And that's across the country too. But the federal government decided they would choose whoever chose which was the best mural in each state. And you're gonna have to go to truth or consequences to see the best mural in the post office in New Mexico. And it's something else. It's called, it's a native bear dance. Um, and it's done by a man named Boris Deutsch. So I don't think he was Native American, but he might have been. Who knows? But go down to TRC sometimes because there's other things to see in TRC. Then the big thing that we're really proud of also that is one of a kind. And that is the National Park Service building on the old Santa Fe Trail. That indeed is the largest United States office building made of adobe. It was made on the spot with those CCC boys and WPA boys making adobes and building that large building. And there are paintings and pottery on display in that building when it's open. Laboratory of Anthropology had landscaping. The Museum of Indian Arts has lots of art and uh, pottery. Museum of International Folk Art, uh, there's some done by Odin Hullen Kramer. 
And the History Museum, oh my gosh, if you get hooked on this like me, you can spend hours in the History Museum going through all the documents. And then wander over to the Museum of Fine Art and don't miss Will Schuster's six frescoes in the courtyard. They are monumental. And then there are only 186 pieces of New Deal art in the Museum of Fine Art collection. And um, now we get to the state capitol. We've gone down a ways, down the street a couple of blocks. Uh, the state capitol, the roundhouse, is not a New Deal building. It was built in the 60s. But there are things in it that were brought in. And one of them was a big mural that was in that military building that is now the Military Museum. And um, it was done by uh, <clears throat> a guy who liked to play polo and uh, Randall Davey, where he learned to play polo uh, when he was an, an NIMI student. And it is in the passageway between the Capitol and the building next to it. It's a huge, huge mural. And it was in a conference room and I was afraid it was going to get banged up with the chairs hitting against it. So I talked him into letting us put it on a long-term loan in the Capitol area. So go and enjoy that one. And don't miss the bronzes there, the straw inlay work, the paintings, the CCC statue. Now that was put up by our organization in 2009. And it is one of 72 across this nation. And I'm going to show you a picture I've got of it. I hope you can see it. But in the meantime, please go to the corner. It's not a corner, it's Saint, it's Don Gaspar and South Capitol. And there's a pass walkway going between across the street. And that this CCC worker statue, I wish you could see it better, is a life-size statue of those CCC boys um, working hard. And there is another one at Bandelier, and there's another one at the at the Elephant Butte Dam site. So, and I'm going to be in TRC next week because there's a group that is wanting to get another one of the CCC statues and put it up at the museum in TRC. So if you had somebody in your family that was in the CCC, don't miss. Do what the CCC boys did when we put that statue up. They climbed, They I put it down low so you could get up and touch it. And they, they grabbed around it and hugged it and thanked God for the CCC work that they had. And we thank them for all that they did for our, our nation and our state. Um, I have brought a couple of other books that we have also done for your information. This is a new book that we've come out with that is Women in the, and the Spirit of the New Deal. And we did that with uh, two other organizations and I made sure we got women in it from New Mexico, and uh, that included uh, Maria Martinez, who was a New Deal artist, and Pablita Velarde, and that great educator in New Mexico, Adelina Otero Warren, and a few others. So if you're interested in what the women did around the New Deal, give me a call, um, and we'll get you a copy of that book. It's, uh, and then, this is a book done by somebody named Catherine Flynn, uh, and it's called The Public Art and Architecture in New Mexico, 1933 to 43. And it will tell you in detail all kinds of things that you want to know in every town of this state. And then I want to share with you one of our other offerings that we have that is you could order and put in your car and travel all over this state. And that's our set of New Deal license plate, I'm sorry, New Deal maps. Here's Northern New Mexico, here's Central New Mexico, and here's Southern New Mexico. And these things open up, they fit in your 
in your car pocket um, really easily. But there's information on the back and the front of them, where you could go, what it is, who did it, and it's all over this state. So give me a call, 690-5845, or get on our website, which is a great big long word, but I'm going to give it to you, NNDPA, New Mexico Chapter, Dot org. And these things are on that, and there are other things that are on that website too. Once again, NNDPA, New Mexico Chapter, dot org. Or our email, give me an email, New Deal at CyberMesa.com. And to wrap this up, I'd like to ask you what can you do to make the New Deal still a good deal? Oh, and I do just happen to have a license, a bumper sticker that says, where's the new deal when we need it? And I think our current president, who uh, idolized our president in Washington, uh, is trying his best to do what he can also to repeat. And we also have one of our legislators, Congresswomen, Senator Teresa Ledger Fernandez, is now got two pieces of legislation in Congress to reproduce the WPA art program and the WPA writers program. Uh, but come to this library. We've got a photo exhibit that shows you 30 some odd photographs of artwork all over the state. It's up on the second floor and you can just wander in and enjoy it. And some of these books are also on display in the, in the glass display case. But we'd also like to have you contact us and tell us about the New Deal things that you know about or the people that were in your family that worked on this project, one of those projects. Were they in the CCC? Were they in the WPA? Were they in some of the women's activities, cooking and sewing? Uh, a, a facility down around Rio Dosa made all the mattress covers and sheets and pillowcases and clothes for the children down in TRC at the hospital with polio. So the women were also doing food programs and sewing programs. So everybody got put to work in order to survive. Um, we would like to have you tell others about all this and we'd be happy to talk to you or any groups that you would like to have us come speak to or maybe give you a walking tour of downtown Santa Fe and on up to the, or on down to the Capitol, I guess we should say. And please do check out that website and uh, order, get a set of those maps and put them in your car. A woman called me the other day and got it and called me back and she said, my gosh, there's a bunch of things to see. I don't know if we'll ever be able to see everything. So get into it. And while you're getting into it, why don't you join our organization? It's very inexpensive. And uh, we'd like to have you join as an individual or as a family or as a lifetime member, whatever you're wanting to do. So call me or email me or go on the website and join our organization and get us get involved with us. And if you have a veteran that you would like to honor and you could donate to the project to restore this disheveled looking fountain and we will put up a plaque with all the people's names that people want to honor in memory of their family veteran. And um, we hope that uh, this will be something that you can get talking up and thinking about with some of your family Maybe it'll cause you to learn all kinds of new things about your family's history that you didn't know. It's a thing that we need again, and it's a positive thing, and we hope that you will get involved with us in whatever way you want to in order to help us preserve the New Deal and all its accomplishments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming I, on a personal level. I have to tell you that I come from a family of farmers and ranchers uh, on the other side of the mountain. And 
from where the land or when the where, where the wind blows and uh, uh, and the dust did <laughs> yeah out in the dust bowl and uh, there's rows of trees out there called shelter belts that were planted under one of those programs and I have to tell you all these many years later every year without fail we have apricots from those trees so, <laughs> so uh yeah it's I still think, feeding you today it's still feeding us today it's just a wonderful program please come to the library to look at this collection i think you'd have a good time with yourself and your family and friends and turn it into a bit of a scavenger hunt santa fe is really rich with all oh of god this, yes <laughs> with this collection as well as all of the state of new mexico and um I think we're going to sign off now. Thank you once again. We truly do appreciate it. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. And come and enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> From, I'm in the South Capitol, and, and you haven't been tuned out yet. I just think it's so terrific, and I like your plug for the new re the let's see the the new renew, new deal the renew D new deal yes. and and yeah. congratulations yeah. to Legendary Legend Fernandez Bravo yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is so exciting I can't believe I'm actually talking to you <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Well, I'm married into the Howell, the West. Howell West family, so I, I was going to say your family was involved. Just yeah, Jerry yeah. about it. Of course, Jerry will tell you he's too young, but <laughs> <laughs> but he'll tell you a lot. <laughs> yeah, he will. He will. That's great. Still very well too. Yeah, yeah. Let's... So wonderful family. Thank you for being on. Well, I used to work at the public library, so I I love that you're there. Oh, and I, I mentioned the CCC and the New Deal briefly in my little book that I'd edited, sort of one step up from trivia. It's called Santa Fe, 400 Years, 400 Questions, well, edited by Elizabeth West with a lot of help from other people. Anyway, I'm a fan of yours, um, along with a whole bunch of other people. So bravo. Okay. Thanks for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat>